I take pride in being able to bring you guys high quality sports news within an hour or so of it being reported. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. The one problem with that is, is that I don't really get the full story of what went down behind the scenes up until the next day. So in this video, this is more of a follow up as to the real reason why Antonio Brown left the field. And it's actually kind of crazy because I think this could be a very serious legal situation based off of how Bruce Arians responded to the media and based off of what he's being accused of. So before we get to the content, we're giving away $500 to a subscriber that turns on our notifications on this channel. We're also giving away $500 once we get to 50K followers on Instagram. Now that we get all that out of the way, break. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? I understand that when we all saw the Antonio Brown incident yesterday, myself included, there was a moment of shock and then followed by a moment of, okay, it's just Antonio Brown being Antonio Brown. But the thing is, let's say if you're blaming Antonio Brown for potentially having CTE or just thinking that he's an erratic human being, usually there's a trigger that causes a person to do a specific thing. Antonio Brown didn't just sit down on the sidelines and take off his shirt and said, screw this, I'm out. There had to have been something that pushed him over the edge that eventually caused him to say, Hey, listen, I quit. If you look at the past, he's had similar situations to this before. We're working on a huge career piece on Antonio Brown, which we're going to be dropping next week so we could take you through all of it. But until then, basically, if you look at how his time ended in Pittsburgh, things were going good between him and Ben Roethlisberger. But towards the end of his career with the Pittsburgh Steelers, he wasn't seeing eye to eye with Ben Roethlisberger. It's like one of those things where it's the ego. I don't have an ego because it's like, bro, I'm just trying to win. You know, oh, yeah, the good dude called me out. We lose a game. He's like, damn, AB should have ran better route. Why would, you, why would Ben do that? That's the type of guy he is. And then eventually he gets traded to the Oakland Raiders. In Oakland, he didn't get along with Mike Mayock, and I guess sort of with John Gruden, but it was primarily Mike Mayock, and also he did a bunch of weird stuff, like forgetting to wear protective shoes when he went into a cryotherapy chamber, eventually getting frostbitten feet, not agreeing to wear a specific type of helmet, he eventually gets cut by the Oakland Raiders. Then Tom Brady goes out to bat for him. The New England Patriots desperately need a wide receiver. They sign Antonio Brown, a bunch of horrible off the field issues come out in regards to Antonio Brown, and then things end for him there. And now we're in a situation with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Probably his biggest advocate is Tom Brady. He was living with Tom Brady, and he seemed very locked in and devoted to becoming the best wide receiver that he potentially could be. So what caused Antonio Brown to snap? Well, apparently, and this is where it gets interesting because I'm not going to pass either of these sides as fact. I want you to go into this just seeing both sides and then just tell me in the comment section down below what you believe because personally i don't know which side to believe at this point and this is coming to us from ian rapaport saying that what he told the staff from what i understand is that he was not going into the game because in his mind he did not feel like he was healthy the response then from the offensive coaches and from bruce arians was if you are not going to go into the game when we tell you to go into the game then you cannot be here at that point they threw him off the sidelines and then cut him from the team and then that's when antonio brown would take off his jersey and go to the sidelines and pretty much give us probably the most bizarre NFL moment since the Urban Meyer grind at the bar in October. But this was in the midst of an NFL game, so it's a little bit different. But here's the thing, and there's two sides to this. If you pay attention to the previous week, Antonio Brown absolutely crushed it for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As a matter of fact, their entire game plan pretty much flowed through him. As he went off against the Carolina Panthers, he was targeted 15 times, had 10 receptions for 101 yards. Yeah, he was dealing with a hampering ankle injury, but he was out for about eight weeks. So could it have been him just playing up an injury? Because there's also a report that he feels a little bit betrayed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for not backing him up a little bit more during the fake vaccination card incident that caused him to get suspended to begin with. But I also don't believe that because it seems like Bruce Arians, at least in this interview. Well, the history has changed since that statement. A lot of things went on last year that I was very proud of him and I made a decision that this was best for our football team. Some people might 
go back to those comments and say, wait a minute, hasn't this guy had enough chances? I could give a shit what they think. Bear in mind, man, this is during a pandemic. This is a very taboo thing to talk about. What is your head coach supposed to do? Come out and say it was Antonio Brown's right to forge a vaccination card so he wouldn't have to get a vaccine? Obviously, he can't come out and say that straight up, especially if the NFL is pro-vaccination. So I don't know how much I believe in that either. And this was the earliest theory about what was going on. Apparently, originally, they thought that since Antonio Brown needed eight more catches to get a $333,000 bonus, 55 yards for another $333,000 bonus, and another TD for another $333,000 bonus, that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers benched him to save money. But eventually, that would get debunked because it seems like the Buccaneers wanted Antonio Brown to go in, but he didn't end up going in because apparently he felt like he was injured. So here's what Bruce Arians said, and this is where it gets really, really sketchy because Bruce Arians comes out and flat out says, I don't know that he was injured. It's pretty obvious what happened. He left the field and that was it. We had a conversation and he left the field. Seems like he's also trying to use Antonio Brown's reputation against him a little bit, saying, I wish him well. I hope if he needs help, he gets some. It's very hard, but I do care about him. So it seems like he's completely denying the fact that Antonio Brown didn't want to go in because of an injury. Also bear in mind that people can lie for the sake of saving their own face. And in this instance, if this is actually true, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could get a wrongful termination lawsuit from Antonio Brown's lawyer. Very much so. If Antonio Brown truly was injured and did not want to play because he felt like he was injured and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were looking at him and saying, no, you aren't injured, go in, then he could definitely sue them, which is absolutely insane because now it seems like wide receiver, which was the deepest position for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, is now a very thin position for them. A position that originally had an the likes of Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin, and Brashad Perryman as your fourth wide receiver, now has Mike Evans, Cyril Grayson, Tyler Johnson, and Brashad Perryman going into the NFL playoff. And one has to wonder whether or not the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are kind of coming to that realization as well, because at the time that we're making this video, right before Monday Night Football, where the Pittsburgh Steelers take on the Cleveland Browns, Antonio Brown hasn't been released by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but he did give this nice message to Ben Roethlisberger, which is kind of odd considering how they broke up. I know you're sad about Ben Roethlisberger retiring, but it's not over for Ben yet. I know everyone's wondering if it's his last game in Pittsburgh tonight and would it end like this, but it may not end like this. I know Ben, he's a competitor. He loved to play football one of the greatest quarterback all time. And I just don't see him hanging it up. So Patrick, you and all other Steelers fans who looking to think Big Ben is playing his last game in Huntsville, I wouldn't tip my hat on that yet. I wouldn't bet on that yet because Big Ben has a lot of football yet left. And he didn't say that his career was over. He didn't say that it was his last game in Huntsville. So we can't speculate and recollate upon him not playing anymore. So let's be positive, let's cheer him on, let's wish for one of his best games tonight, and let's keep Bennis booming. Patrick, I know you're a huge Steelers fan, and you love Pittsburgh, and you love football. So let's keep Ben Ben in our warm prayers and hopes, and wish him luck tonight. Booming. Now, here's where things get a little interesting because when I first recorded this video, I wanted to just give you guys an update in regards to Antonio Brown's potential side of this entire equation. But what's really unique about this situation is Monday has come and gone and Antonio Brown still has not been released by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, according to Ian Rappaport, this is bound to happen eventually, but one has to wonder, but I can't help but wonder what is actually going on in the front office of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Is there a possibility that Tom Brady is trying to convince the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to keep Antonio Brown? I don't really think so, but I can't really figure out any logical reason why they wouldn't immediately release him today once Bruce Arians said that 
Antonio Brown is no longer a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. We're going to keep you guys posted on this situation, man. So let me know in the comment section down below, whose side are you on? Do you think Antonio Brown's telling you the truth in this instance, or do you think Bruce Arians is telling you the truth? Regardless, it shouldn't have come to the point where Antonio Brown took off his shirt and left the field. I feel like he could have done it in a much more quiet way, and then they could have worked out their differences post-game. But I honestly don't know what to make of this situation. All I do know is I think Antonio Brown's career in the NFL might be over. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this, man. Besides that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.